Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamerartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to show you how to create leaves and plants using power strokes. It's a pass effect that allows you to widen or narrow a stroke along the length of the line. Let's start with the pen tool and a straight line. I prefer the pen tool over the pencil as I get less notes. This makes it easier to edit the line with the note tool. Next I'll add the pass effect. You click on the plus at the bottom and choose the power stroke. It will bring up the settings for the power stroke in the pass effect panel and add three extra notes in pink to your line. You can move these with the node tool. As you can see, it's pretty easy to create a leaf shape. I'll move this one aside and start another one. I just duplicate this one and the new duplicate will have the power stroke already assigned to it. I can also go in and scale the line. This way the leaf will get wider and I can modify it with the node tool. If I bend the line, the power stroke will be adjusted automatically. You might notice that when I go into extremes, the deformation will be a little odd, but for a plant and a leaf, this might just be an added bonus. Let's move the first design off screen and play around with this one. I think that's the better shape for this tutorial maybe a little wider, a little more of a stem, and I have my base leaf shape. I want to color the leaves with a gradient, going from a dark color at the bottom to a lighter color at the top. Seeing this is going to be a rather fantasy looking plant, I can choose the colors really creatively, going from red to green and ending up with a deep purple for the base which can go probably a tad darker as well and a light color at the top. The reason behind the gradient and the darker colors versus the lighter colors is I want to use the same gradient for all my leaves rather than edit the gradient every time I change the leaf or the position of the leaf to make them stand out I rather just alter the position and the spread of my gradient. Darker leaves in the background, lighter leaves in the foreground and you can see the shapes a lot better. For the leaves in the front it's easy to adjust the power stroke. Using the node tool I can adjust the gradient. By moving the start and the end point I can now shade my leaves to make the ones in the back darker and the ones in the front lighter to define the shapes so we can see the different shapes of leaves. Thanks to the gradient all I need to do is move the end node, the dark purple, upwards to define the shapes and make each leaf clearly visible. For the leaves in the front I show more green and move the deep purple out of the shape so they stand out being the brightest elements. I start the shading with an ellipse at the bottom of the plant. This one will get a slight blur and is semi-transparent. I try to avoid pure black for my shadows. I rather go with a deep purple, dark brown or dark green. I duplicate the shape and have a stronger shadow in the center. And then I select all my leaves and duplicate them. Set them to multiply so they do shade. And then go in and modify the power stroke. I make it narrower in the top and center. That way I create the spine in the middle of the leaf. It runs along the curve. It's the same curve that forms the leaf, so the spine is perfectly centered. 
I try to place them on top of the actual shape. The duplicate places everything on the very top of the layer stack. I try to keep things organized and move them back. The stem does not overlap leaves in front of it. With all the stems in place, it's time to do some minor modifications, move things around a little bit and then add more shading. The leaves look pretty bland, so I duplicate a leaf, turn it into a pass. That way the power stroke gets converted into a pass with nodes defining the outline. I delete the nodes on one side and move the curve of the center to match the spine. Set that leaf shape to multiply so it darkens the color below and the leaf has now two sides, a lighter and a darker side. I repeat the process with a few of those leaves to make it look more interesting. I don't think you need to do it on every leaf. That might just make it look boring and repetitive. For the light green leaves, seeing the light colors hardly have an effect if I set them to multiply. I move the gradient just a little bit so I get some shading for the bottom part of this leaf. In order to add some visual interest, I am going to cut a few holes into the leaves. For that I'm creating a circle, give it a color that stands out enough to be visible on the leaves so I know what I'm actually cutting. And then duplicate the circle a few times, resize and reposition it. I combine all the circles with a pass union. and create a duplicate of the leaf again, turn that into a pass. You need to pass for boolean effects, so in order to cut the leaves off the pass, I need both shapes to be pathless. So now I got the leaf with the holes in. I can now use this shape as a clipping group for all the other elements that make up this leaf. I cut those two, the spine and the leaf shape, make the leaf shape with the holes a clipping group and paste the two other elements inside. So I click on the clip and select the position in the layers just above the clip to place them inside. Control Alt V copies them in the right position. I now have my editable power stroke and the spine inside the clipping group. Should I want to make changes, I just take them out, alter them, create a new clipping group and have my new leaf shape. I repeat this process with different size circles in different positions on different leaves. Again, don't do it to all the leaves, it will look boring but on a few of them it just adds more interest and detail. And here is the final result. A rather interesting looking fantasy plant. You can make them more realistic if you want. I didn't work off any reference, so I just played around with the shapes. But the idea will be the same, realistic or not. You start with a line, add a power stroke to it, 
create the leaf shape, create a spine by copying the leaf shape and narrowing the power stroke, add shading by converting the leaf shape to a path and deleting half of the nodes to shade just one side of the leaf. If you want to add holes or unevenness around the edges, you can create another duplicate and use it as a clipping mask. Using the same process, I created this plant. It has a more complex clipping group. I created the pattern for that one using a pattern along paths, but that's for another video. Using the power stroke is a quick and easy way to create interesting shapes quickly and easily. Play around with it. I had great fun doing these and already have the next tutorial video on this topic lined up. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification button, leave a like and a comment in the section below and let me know what you want to see on my blog or on this channel and I'll see you again soon.